Hello and welcome to the next in our series of regional general packs webinars brought to you by the Near Me Network. Uh, today we're focusing on Grampian, Forth Valley and Tayside. And so it's very good to have you along. We've got some excellent speakers lined up for you to uh, describe uh, near me use in uh, general practice and primary care. So before we get underway, I'm going to just show you a uh, bit of housekeeping. So basically all the people that are attending today are on mute and we do have a, a Q&A box on your home screen. And again, that's where you can speak to us, um, ask us questions, put comments, or if you've uh, got answers to other people's questions or you found solutions to other people's uh, questions then please post those as well. We really encourage you to do that. Um, if you require different accessibility options to uh, enable uh, you to uh, participate in this webinar, the three dots uh, within your toolbar will allow you to look at subtitles if needed and you can change the settings on that as well if required. What we'll do is we will collect questions uh, throughout the session today and then we will uh, direct them to the speakers at the end because they're available for, for speaking at the end as well. And if you um, need to share this with colleagues who can't make today, this will be recorded and made available widely um, after the event. And we'll also follow it up with uh, a Q&A will be summarised and shared with you along with any other valuable resources or comments that are made uh, this afternoon. If you find that you're struggling to see or hear us, uh, please um, leave the webinar and rejoin. Uh, sometimes that enables you to get a better connection. Also, other things that might help would be look shutting down anything else on your computer that's using the internet or connecting your computer to a network with an ethernet cable. Uh, hopefully this will enable you to uh, enjoy and participate in our session today. So I'll introduce myself. My name is Mark Bezik. I'm the national lead for the Near Me Network. I'm joined today by Rachel Burke, my colleague from the Tech Programme team as a programme manager. She's going to be moderating and coordinating the questions. I'm delighted to be joined today by Scott Jameson as well. Uh, he's the Executive Officer for Quality Improvement at the Royal College of GPs and also a GP himself in Tayside. We have Dr Margarita Smith from McDuff Medical Practice in NHS Grampian. We have Wendy Edwards, who's a practice manager in our DACH Health Centre in NHS Grampian, and also Julie Cunningham, Cunningham sorry, who is practice manager from Bonnyback Medical Practice in Forth Valley. We're also supported by David Bath, who is a producer today uh, from the National VC team, helping this webinar to run smoothly. And also please engage with us on Twitter. We have a couple of Twitter uh, handles around at NHS near me and myself at Mark Bezik AHP and any hashtags that you'd like to you know use whilst tweeting around near me or GP near me or health centre near me. So that's a bit of an introduction. Um, we are going to just basically set the scene around offering near me appointments as a choice for patients. I'm going to look at what's been successful implementation of this within primary care across Scotland and also explore some of the challenges and how these have been overcome uh, and, and obviously uh, hopefully a chance to, to um, gain some insight uh, from our panel in the Q&A section. So um, I would very much like to introduce Dr Scott Jameson to you now uh, who's going to give you a bit of a, a national flavour and picture of near me use in Scotland. Thank you very much over to you Scott. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. Um, so it's uh, it's a pleasure to be here to to speak to colleagues. Um, and I'm going to outline from from RCGP Scotland perspective um, where, where we think um, uh, near me can fit in and does fit in. Um, I, I think the um, the college recognises that um, you know when we first started and hearing about near me and my discussions with Claire Morrison, the predecessor to Mark. Um, uh, we recognised that this was not going to be as simple in general practice as just providing kit. Um, it's, it's certainly not, and there's so much more to it um, than just um, saying, uh, here's the kit and here are your logins. Um, because we, we are, we're GPs and, and nurses and, and in practices, we are in relationship-based care. Um, I, I really, really miss seeing patients. And I'm, I'm, I'm consulting today, um, I'm working in the practice, and I, and I, and I still to see a patient in person, um, bar, bar doing um, uh, one person, which feels 
which feels odd. It doesn't feel like um, the same general practice as, as I sorely miss, but um, that's COVID-19 and that's some of the risks that we've got around us. But COVID-19 has certainly pro provided challenges for us, but it certainly opened a, a massive door for, for, for near me. The consulting by, by, by phone and by, by app um, has had some bad press, um, I suppose, with RCGP. Um, we, we struggled a few years ago with the sponsorship of one of our conferences with a, a provider and the, 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 the profession was 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 upset in some ways, I suppose, because we, you know, but we depend upon that relationship continuity, caring, the Barbara Starfield kind of uh, compassion and core of general practice that we we value, and here we are with a with a with a, an online GP provider who's consulting in a remote way on your phone, and and why did they grow to be one of the biggest kind of providers of general practice? It's because patients wanted it. There are some patients that wish to have a relationship with their clinician on, on, on a video call, and. I think as GPs, we, we struggle to understand that. And I, and I suppose that links into the, the public engagement um, uh, survey that was done over something like 5,000 respondents. Um, and that's available on the tech website. And I'm sure Rachel can put the link to that on there. And I think it was only when I read that, did it kind of click on me that I think we'd always thought of it as a profession, or certainly I had always thought about it from a of a professional's perspective, I always thought, oh, what does what does it gain me over the phone? And I really like to see people. Well, what, what am I talking about me for? Because this is as much about a patient's engagement as it is about my engagement with a patient. And so it was only reading that that I saw how how the, the ones that responded, certainly, obviously lots of responder bias here, but the 5,000 is a lot of people to turn around and say, I really like see, doing this and this is a lot more convenient for my lifestyle. And I don't always know who I'm speaking to when I'm speaking on the phone. And I like seeing somebody, you know, on a screen. And then it kind of clicked on me that this is kind of like when I FaceTime my mum. And, and I love FaceTiming my mum and my dad and seeing them or FaceTiming my nephew or my sister. There is something about seeing somebody which provides a different level of, of, of subconscious engagement beyond which we get by a telephone. Um, and the public aren't enthusiastic about it. We have moved in my practice on to, to basically pre-bookable um, near me appointments. Um, the people can book a pre-bookable near me, a pre-bookable telephone, or if needs be, they get pre-booked into a face-to-face -face, uh, clinic um, if that's what, what they need. Um, the face-to-face -face ones are screened beforehand, of course. Um, they, they need to have, we need to feel that it needs to be seen face-to-face, -face, but um, we offer a choice. It's a very simple choice. And, you know, um, oh, I need to think I need to see a GP or a nurse. OK, well, what kind of appointment would suit you best? We offer this, we offer this and we offer. And what that's done for us as a practice is actually reduced the on the day demand. It means that work is a lot more predictable. But I like having 15 minutes with a patient just to know what I need to do and 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 managing them all in the telephone and a continuous triage. I, I, we, what I was finding difficult and it perpetuated demand a little bit for us as well. So we have gone on now. We have, in my practice, I think up to something like six or seven hundred near me's completed so far. We have near me um, kits. We have the, the webcams and the headsets in every single room in my practice, um, and that's really key. Um, and if you, that that is coming, I know in Tayside. So for those that are listening from Tayside, um, um, I promise we are we're, we are working hard on it. If Claire Jameson's on the call, I know that they're they're working so hard to get that progressed, and it will be coming. Um, and, um, you know, that my registrar is the one that led the way, actually, in my practice, because she went on, uh, she was pregnant. And uh, so she ended up doing entire consultations of, of, of near me an entire afternoon. Um, so good on her. And we've got a lot of catching up to do. But now she's on return to leave and we've got that opportunity. Um, I'd like to thank the hard work from the, the team that have, have worked on near me. Um, they've been really open to working with the college. We've produced two really good documents, or three now actually, with the, the out of hours, the care homes, and the uh, the, the, the general practice um, uh, descriptions and, and how you can make best use of it. Um, and we've, we've put that on there. Um, that was a great collaboration that we did across multiple practices within Scotland and out of our centres as to how you could use it. Um, but it's just a, a suggestion. It's showing that there are different ways to use it. And I think that integration into the normal way of working is really, really key. Um, and I think looking forward, I think we've got work to do with regards to accessibility. If one of my elderly frail patients has a has a tertiary care appointment for a valve replacement in Glasgow, 
um, and they normally offer near me appointments, why should she not be able to do a near me appointment somewhere somewhere locally? It might be in a community centre or something. She can go and have a private room where she can do that near me rather than having to commute down to Glasgow or do it on a telephone, which might not be as good because she might really value seeing somebody. So I think there's more to do in facilitating near me for, for some things. But um, goodness, have we come a long way. 600,000 near me is completed and counting, I think now. Um, it's been great work and it's been great to support it. Um, and uh, if you do have questions, I'll stick around and I'm, I'm happy to answer them in the panel. Um, and I thank you very much, Mark, for the opportunity to speak again. Thank you. Thank you, Scott, for that. That's a really helpful kind of national insight into um, near me and, and where it's, it's going uh, across the local college of GPs, but also that the personal recounts of your experience, not just in work within Tayside, but also in your personal life, you know, uh, linking in with um, your relatives and family as well. So before we uh, go on to our next speaker, uh, I would really like to find out, well, the whole team would like to find out where, where people are, are joining us from today. So please, could you put in the chat box the health board or the area of, of Scotland or, or beyond where you're, where you're um, joining us from today. That'd be really helpful uh, to us if you could do that. That's super, thank you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to uh, Dr. Margarita Smith and she's going to speak to us uh, about her experiences in her health centre. So um, over to you, Margarita. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much, um, Mark, and thank you so much, Scott. And, and, and partly of what I'd like to say is to echo quite a few things that you've said already. Um, I just want to say a warm welcome from a wild, wintry, windy, wet BAMP where I work as a, a, a normal GP. And you see there's already some reasons to use NEMU already. Um, so just to give you an introduction um, and through our journey that we've had as the practice at Macduff Medical Practice in BAMP really kind of started for us a roundabout. March 2020 when we had the first lockdown and we really wanted to try and reduce um, footfall into the practice and it really was near me was um, prompted and, and, and precipitated specifically by Covid. Um, so in our practice, just to give you a little bit of background, um, we are a practice of around about 12,500 patients. We have four GPs um, working here three advanced nurse practitioners, one emergency care practitioners, four physicians associates, three clinical pharmacists and physiother two physiotherapists. And we have some GPs working from home uh, and other colleagues working from home. Um, and, uh, and that's where we're at, at the moment. So round about sort of March, February, March time, there was a big investment into the practice from the practice and from the health board for the, the technical infrastructure to help. So a majority of our rooms are clinical rooms and even upstairs in the admin rooms are dual screen now. And the GP practices and some other rooms are triple screens so that we can have um, near me on in one screen all the time. And then maybe Teams or whatever another, or you can you know, dual screen. Um, our vision is a software application we use with Dotman. Um, and that's how we're using it. So that infrastructure is there with the loudspeakers and the camera. Um, um, we, we, we had splitters as well. We have headphones for, uh, you know, primarily we started doing quite a lot of phone calls with patients um, initially, but as time has progressed, we've really tried to embrace um, the philosophy of using near me for, for a number of reasons. Um, and I'll try and go through those with you. Um, so, so basically the, the video consultations, the near me, the attend anywhere really is just that. I have found and experienced that when I'm, I'm speaking to someone, FaceTiming them with the near me, you know, they can be, I've had it with a patient, with a child in the back of a car on a journey somewhere, a farmer who's out doing his work in the field in the tractor, just you know, 10, 15 minutes near me, but it suited him perfectly. Um, and someone in the pajamas just cozies up in bed with a hot chocolate. So, you know, it, it, it encompasses all sorts of things. Um, we're using it a lot in primary care, as I said, and um, the GPs have been using it mainly, but we are, and now other, you know, other of our clin clinical staff are embracing it and we're actively encouraging that too. How do we use near me in the practice then? So electively, when patients are, are um, offered, when they phone in to create an appointment, to ask for an appointment, they're offered either a phone or, or a video consultation at the point of contact. Um, and in our practice, we have two reception desks. Both desks have triple screens. One screen always has the near me open. So there's a virtual waiting room um, where, where the receptions can keep an eye on for, for patients join in preparation or anticipation for their appointment. And so when they see a patient have joined, then they, they check the patient in as you would do normally into the consultation screens. 
And if they see that someone's running behind or running late and someone's waiting in the, in the, the, the virtual waiting area, then they can just text or phone the patient um, to say, look, someone's running a bit late, you know, just hang, hang up fire, you know, that type of thing. Um, so th uh, the, and the other thing just to let you know as well that patients who do organise the, the near me appointments, they have a text 48 hours um, and a text the night before their scheduled appointment just as a reminder that, that they've got this near me appointment coming up. So we can do that electively um, and, and, we're, and we're trying to do electively much more, you know, so um, much more in terms of chronic disease management, asthma reviews for other sort of folks within the, the practice. Um, but the mainstay you know, up until recently was opportunistically after patients have been triaged by a phone call um, by the GPs or whoever's doing the on call duty rota, it could be the, the AMP, the GP, um, or even just doing your, your consultations and your, doing your phone consultations, you think, do you know this? seeing the patient might be worthwhile and so it's really easy to switch from a phone consultation just to the near me and um, it, it's very easy and <clears throat> i'll explain how how i do that as a gp is so that's so that's not when it's been pre-arranged and um, so we've opened near me is opened up on our screen in one of the monitors and you can look down the right hand side you can see that there's the opportunity to share the entry point url so basically you can text um, a patient on their mobile phone um, or you can email a patient um, on their, you know, an email switch so can go to or whatever it is, a laptop, their PC, a tablet, and they, can, they just simply have to, to click the link and that takes them straight onto the, the waiting area to arrange the, the video consultation. They just pop in their, their name, their date of birth, their phone number, and they go through their checks for you know, their internet connectivity and if the voice is working in the camera and then they agree to terms and conditions and that's it. It doesn't take that long. It takes a little bit of time, not that long though. Um, and it's definitely very worth it, it's worthwhile. Um, so really to, to let you know, I think, you know, what has it been working well for? And there's a variety of things and, and I'll go through how, how we've personally found that helpful in the practice. Um, clinically, um, I mean, there's lots of things that we can see clinically and um, and, and it's very um, easy to, to have a handle on using the near me. Um, I use it for dementia reviews. I've used it to create um, an, an adult with incapacity and complete the form. So I'm with someone with dementia, with you know a carer or the relative or someone who's got a power of attorney or not, and I'm able to see someone, have a chat with them, um, spend some time with them, and that allows me to be able to complete this type of form without having to physically see someone. It's really easy to examine children on the near me. So you just ask, you know, mum, dad, whoever's around, just to you know to take off some of the layers. And um, you know, most people at home now have got thermometers and um, bits and pieces. So ch children are really easy to examine. Um, I, I've used it for substance misuse, for mental health, for palliative care. Um, I'll give you an example of that. I have a patient or have a patient who has you know, metastatic um, lung malignancy to the brain and diagnosed last March and um, has been for chemotherapy, radiotherapy, it's palliative. Um, and, and, you know, in December, funnily enough, it was this particular patient, he phoned, I was having phone consultations with him, he's diabetic as well on steroids, so it's a bit complex. And he, on the phone with him and his wife, loudspeaker, they were just saying, you know, we haven't actually seen um, a, a someone, seen someone throughout this whole journey, just had the treatments. And so, I did elect to offer that with a couple of face to face at that point. And then afterwards I decided, well, now we've done this, let, let's just maybe do the near me, the, the video consultation. They, they understand the concept, they do it with their family and we'll do that kind of on a regular sort of monthly basis just to keep that connection. And, it, and it's been terrific. It's been so valuable. Um, so, so it can be used for, for, for lots of clinical um, criteria. Our physiotherapists now use near me. Um, I mean, it doesn't give you everything. It can't give you strength for musculature but it can give you a lot so physiotherapists are using it the ANPs at the practice are using it um, for they do a lot of the sort of like you know ear nose and throat type of thing having a look at the throat skins we have one of our physicians associates who specializes in dermatology so she uses it all the time for that and again one of our clinical pharmacists is now starting to use it a lot more regularly to do the respiratory reviews um, and to show people inhaler technique um, using the near me. So, so clinically it's, it has valuable um, benefits, I think, but some of the even greater benefits, I'd say, uh, and Scott did absolutely talk about this, is about the clinic, the clinician-patient and, and family relationship. 
patients like it. It's much more personable. I think it adds, for me, a, an extra level of humanity, empathy, compassion. When you can see someone's face and you can look someone in the eye and, and just have all these non-verbal cues, it seems to be more intimate. And, and I think that can actually help build up, you know, and, and maintain that level of clinician um, patient trust, actually. Um, another thing just to mention in terms of benefits, in the, it, it has actually reduced the number of patient contacts. Um, not all of our practice staff are using it consistently all the time and we do promote it and we're just getting more and more used to it. It's like anything else. It's experience and, and using it to get, get a handle on things and become comfortable with it. Um, <clears throat> one or two of our PAs are not quite using it so much and so they might do, be doing a a phone call with a patient and find a bit of difficulty just not managing to resolve the consultation and then they've popped that to one of us who you know don't necessarily need to see the patient and bring them in face to face um, and I've done a new me and that has just resolved the situation completely and so so you know I think it was if it was used first time around it, you know that clinician may have had a bit more confidence as to say well I'm fine with this at the moment so it can actually reduce I think the, the patient contacts and the number of appointments with the practice. Um, and there absolutely will always be areas and patients clinically and for whatever reason for we, we do need to see face to face. Um, but ultimately, you know, the whole thing was triggered for us specifically, well, not just, but mainly by COVID. And, um, and, and it's just mindful that, you know, we're in another lockdown. Um, in fact, one of our, just to let you know, one of our, 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 our um, staff has COVID. We've got some patients, some of the staffs at home isolating and it just undermines that need to try and reduce footfall and, and even potentially to reduce house visits, that exposure at the moment. So yes, COVID, out with COVID, absolutely still positive benefits. Um, and also, you know, the other thing is that in, in, in this current climate, in the last you know nine months almost, a lot more patients are, are purchasing their own blood pressure monitors, thermometers. I don't know if a family doesn't have a thermometer nowadays. And pulse oximeters, even a lot of people who've got chronic respiratory issues are buying their own pulse oximeters. They're inexpensive from Amazon. So you can do a lot with a patient with this um, with this kind of information, have, getting some sort of readings, getting the sort of clinical um, review as much as possible. And, and in some cases, you can admit to hospital without necessarily having to see a patient. Um, so, so that's that's important. Some of the some of the drawbacks, um, you know, definitely the patient's broadband, whether they're using 4G, that's important that they have that the patient side, not just our side, that the patient side that they're able to, to utilise that or have a, have a good enough strength um, to be able to, to have the functionality to use it with their own IT. Um, I would say there have been a couple of issues I've noticed using mobile phones that patients have agreed to the, the um, terms and conditions and, and enabled things like the, <clears throat> the voice and the camera, but somehow there's been occasional glitch where it doesn't connect to the camera and it doesn't function. Um, and that, I'm not terribly sure if that's one type of phone or, or what system, whatever, but, but ultimately it's only a few times that's happened with some phones uh, and you might try it again later with the same phone and it works, but I've never experienced that problem with anybody who's used a tablet of any sort or a PC or a laptop. Um, so, it, you know, if I come across that hitch with the mobile, I'll say, don't worry about it, we've got a bit of time. I'll just I'll just ping you an email and um, if you're able to collect, you know, pick that up on whatever, any other device um, and then that can help just facilitate this face to face and uh, not face to face the, the new me, which is almost like a face to face, but not physical. But um, yes, yeah, so basically th there are roundabouts and um, ways to work around about that little glitch and um, which is not happening all the time. OK, so things like the intimate examination of some things need to be seen. Um, but I mean, we're not always going to get around everything, but it's just such a valuable adjunct. Um, going forward in the practice, we're oh, hoping. Sorry, that, Margarita. Oh, yep. I mean, I'm, I'm just just conscious of time for for our own speakers. Are we are we are we okay just to finish on one point, and that could be one of somebody else, please. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, certainly. So I, I was going to say just a professional point it's about tips. Really, age is not a barrier. Be very, be professional. Be confidential. Use your facial expression. Use your hands. You know, that's about it. So it's a big thumbs up from us. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Marguerite. That's super. No, that's really good to hear those real life examples of you in practice, but also the really practical things you put in place to support near me use within your local area. 
Uh, and also the examples of, of where other people have used it in tractors and in bed at home. You know, who wants to travel into uh, to surgery if you're feeling rubbish in bed? So, uh, and, and again, how crucial the kit setup was. So that was super, thank you very much. So, so next we're going to hear from um, Wendy Edwards, who is a practice manager, and she's going to talk through um, a, a post that she did regarding to a project related to near me. So I'm going to just put uh, Wendy's poster up and then we can hear from Wendy. So over to you, Wendy. You're on mute, Wendy. Apologies. <laughs> um, so initially, thanks to Mark. Um, as an introduction, my name's Wendy Edwards. I'm a practice manager at Ardagh Health Centre in Bucky, and I've been in post for the last 10 years. Like a lot of practices in Grampian, and in particularly Murray, we received our allocation a near me kit. It was about two years ago now. But I have to confess um, that we had little engagement or interest initially. And I think across the practice, we were quite fearful in assuming that we would be opening a set of floodgates that we weren't going to be able to cope with um, because we were already struggling with demand. So we, we kind of just put things on the back burner for a while um, and I suppose it was for a, a number of months um, until I decided to sign up for a uh, Scottish Improvement Leader course um, and I had to pick a project and what I decided to do was was uh, video consulting because it was something that we hadn't engaged with um, we didn't really know anything about and the poster that you see up on the screen was kind of my, this really the journey that we had in the practice. So we were in a lucky position that we had been introducing near me for a year um, prior to COVID starting. So anybody that knows Murray, um, they'll know that it's a high in work poverty population. Um, our DAC itself has got over 9,000 patients and we are classed as being semi-rural with an increased frail elderly population together with high multiple comorbidities. So it was quite a diverse um, group and in, in population that we were we were looking at. So just to kind of explain where we started from, um, it was very much I'll, I'll turn my camera off. I've, I've not got a very good signal. Um, so just to start off with, um, we did awareness sessions with staff just so that they could, they had a bit more insight in what um, near me was. We gathered interest um, across the teams. We set up demos in groups across the practice and then we moved to individual training. We initially focused on training the admin teams um, and that was really to build up their confidence and competence so that they could not, could not only help the clinicians but also help the patients. So during this test of change that we were working on, the admin team were absolutely vital and that, that was a big learning point, I think, um, for us trying to embed it in practice. We then selected a number of patients um, from the staff that were interested to trial um, a few sessions. So we we really took quite a bit of time in getting their feedback to make tweaks and changes in the system. Um, and that was definitely worthwhile. We then, it was very clear we had some natural ambassadors across the practice. It, it, these were two admin um, girls. They acted as a point of contact um, to encourage patients to trial it, but also to be the point of contact for the GP um, who may have been lacking in confidence, just moving um, swiftly from a telephone triage to a, a, 
attending a near me consultation. We also had one AMP um, who just thought it was great. Um, she was triaging patients and very quickly moving them um, to a near me consult, particularly with children, like Margarita had said. Um, and that was it was she found it very easy and reassuring um, just to enhance her assessment to make a decision. We had one GP who had a special interest in respiratory um, and he engaged a number of his COPD patients um, to build up his confidence as well as, as theirs. Um, because he knew these patients, um, he felt as though it was very quick and easy to, to make that assessment to discuss their anticipatory medications, to observe their respiratory rates. Um, and between them, they both felt as though it actually did reduce hospital admissions because more appropriate care was put in place quicker. We had inter considerable interest from our practice pharmacist. Um, she encouraged patients, particularly the frail elderly patients, to do their polypharmacy reviews so that the patients could hold up their medication boxes rather than try to spell them or say it's the purple tablet. Um, she felt as though it was a much safer way of reviewing medicines and making changes. We then moved on um, nearer about nine months into this journey to work very closely with the community hospital and the care homes um, and do slightly separate, separate projects with them. What we were really lucky was both the care homes and the community hospital had friends groups and they invested in iPads um, so that it was very easy for the patients to engage. For now, and we're kind of two years down the line, um, our ANP does their weekly kind of ward round in the care home um, and the GP can then do some acute intervention as well. We've had care home staff phoning saying there's a problem with somebody's mobility um, and they were able to kind of video the patient with the with the GP. The other thing that the GP has found really useful with the care homes and the community hospitals is with palliative care um, and also for challenging um, family dynamic conversations. So they could start a consult with the patient and actually invite a family member in so that he's then not having to then phone a family member and, and relay a message or the patient relaying a message. Um, there can be some joint decision making with that. So that's worked really well. Since COVID started, we've used it in a much greater sense with the community hospital to try and reduce footfall in the hospital. We would normally have had someone attending um, the community hospital every day, but now at least twice a week this is done on, on near me and the senior charge nurse, because they've got a few nurses now that are prescribers, the senior charge nurse on duty will just will take the iPad round to the patients that do need reviewed, um, which has made a, a, a huge difference, um, both for quality and for time benefits for us to try and manage, manage workload. So the pharmacist now does her six monthly polypharmacy reviews with the care homes. Um, and again, this has been a huge time saving for, for both parties. So, the other thing that you'll notice, it, it's probably quite small on my poster there, but it may be worth looking later on, are comments from patients um, that we gathered throughout that first nine months. We had some very positive feedback from parents, particularly with children with learning disabilities um, and sphere autism, which may be really quite anxiety provoking, taking them out of their home environment to take to a 15 minute appointment with the GP. Um, and it was having an, a, an a very positive effect on the, on the whole family. The comment um, that's that's on the poster was that the, this particular family had to then drive round about locally for two hours to settle that little boy down. Um, but he built a good relationship with the AMP um, on the video consult. We 
were in a really lucky position that we was using near me for a year beforehand. Um, we have increased our, our usage. It's like like others have said, it's just one of the many things that are offered to patients. Um, I think the whole multidisciplinary team can use it. The admin staff are using it for registering patients, um, either for mobility problems. Um, we started off by using the, the meeting rooms to build up people's confidence, but obviously we've, we've kind of transitioned into Teams, so we're not using that function of it. Um, but certainly it's, it's another choice for patients um, more than anything else. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. That, that was a really uh, lovely uh, account of, of your, your use locally. I think particularly in the, in the, the way that the, the admin and reception staff have embraced that, <coughs> that, that sets the whole tone really. And the range of staff conditions that, you've been, that have been um, offered near me as a choice is really stunning. And again, the patient feedback says it all really in terms of, of convenience and ease of use and, and uh, really person-centred um, care. So thank you very much for sharing that. Um, I'm now going to uh, pass this on to Julie Cunningham, who's another practice manager. And um, over to you, Julie. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much, Matt, for having us. First of all, I apologise. Um, most of everything that could be discussed has been dis discussed already, so I'll just make this very brief in order it's just really a summary from our point of view. Um, near me consultations, the reality of COVID really brought um, the immediate necessary need and requirement to adapt to a new template and how we, the appointment system that we offered our medical services uh, in particular as how we managed our consultations. I have to be honest, um, initially there was not a keen desire to use near me. The manual log on um, was a wee bit sort of clunky and, and a wee bit time consuming, but um, we worked with our, um, the, the person who runs our website in order just to go straight onto our website, click on the button that just takes you right into the waiting room. Um, I think probably like everything else, it was really just getting, uh, it was something different, something new. Um, so there was a wee bit of resistance there, but um, I think once everybody um, logged on to it, used it, became familiar with it, we realised how simple it was. Um, they increased, they grew increased confidence with the system um, and it just made it very, very easy to use. The patients liked it, the GPs liked it, they felt, everybody felt that face-to-face -face contact was much more comfortable and um, it was how, more like how they were used to practice medicine in the, in the, the, no, the more normal days. Um, I think everybody feels it's extremely beneficial to have the visual contact, see how the patient is engaging with them rather than relying on the patient being a good historian and diagnosing from that. It allows the GP, the clinician, to explore in the general way to see how the patient responds to certain questions. I think they find this helpful when the patient suffers from anxiety, stress or any form of mental health issue. Obviously, with that in mind, it works extremely well with our mental health and our specialist. Um, I'll just make this brief because, as I say, everything's been covered already. Um, we've been able to utilise the system to enable the practice nurse to use um, to use near me for some non-essential medical conditions like peak flow technique, um, due to the fact that there's you know we're trying to reduce unnecessary footfall into the practice. So it is good from that point of view when people are struggling with them, um, their inhalers. Um, it is quite good to be able to see to, to monitor them a little bit better. So overall, a brief overview uh, of Bonnie Bank, we found it works extremely well. We've been using it now for six to eight months, probably a bit like what everybody said. Um, we did have the um, technology in place before, but COVID certainly forced our hand in using that. Um, and as I said before, the GPs like it, the patients like it. Um, I think everybody just feels more comfortable that they're actually able to see the, the GP and it's more like the service they used to provide. We have adapted our template um, and we've actually put the near me slots in place in, in order as a, as a mechanism to force the near me to be used in order that patients and staff do become more familiar with it. 
Um, so I think from that point of view, I think when initially when we started it, when it wasn't um, combined into the, the appointment template system, I think the me and me were the appointment slots that were, were probably used the least. Um, we've now changed our appointment system where there's probably more near me than actual daily telephone consultation slots um, that can be booked in advance as well. Um, and I, I just find that when you're left with that situation, you just tend to get on with it a wee bit better than um, introducing it in your own time. Uh, like everybody else, uh, I genuinely think this is the way forward. Even post COVID, uh, I think the greatest learning point for us is how many people uh, use the service and uh, many of the older age group are very, very comfortable with this type of technology. And I think that was probably quite an insight for us because we always um, associate this trend with the younger generation. But um, because of the way that families are, families have um, children away from home, um, abroad and I think they're much more used to using this service than ever before so it's they're very comfortable and that's just been our experience and everything else from the technical point of view um, what it does has already been covered so that's probably everything that I've got to say. Thank you very much, Julie, for that. Thank you for adding those those kind of local insights there. I think particularly around challenging our assumptions about what types of people can or wouldn't like to use near me, that's really important. And again, to describe your journey of, of how confidence increased. And I think, again, a lot of the questions we get asked is how does it integrate with your appointment system? So giving that example was really valuable around templates. Um, and, and again, it just people's feedback saying it was more like the service we were able to offer before COVID came along. So you still have that face-to-face that -face contact. So um, so yes, basically we, we've, we've come to the point where um, we will open it up for some questions now. So I'm hoping that Rachel will have had a chance to um, pull together some questions um, and we can open up to the panel um, and um, see how things are going. So over to you, Rachel, How the what's been the chat on the uh, I did uh, get a private question asking, how do you get patients uh, keen and comfortable to use near me? I'll pose that to the panel. Who who would like to jump in first? Um, can I start just from, a, I suppose from a, a GP perspective? Is that OK, Rachel? And then because uh, definitely patients, um, patients trust their GP, they trust their admin and they trust the system. And I, I, and I think we um, assume that it's it's you know is it one or t'other? I don't think it's I don't think it is exclusive. I think the whole system just has to feel like that's one of the options that are available. So um, if you have half your practice not willing or wishing to do it, and half half wishing to do it, or you have some of your admin will book them into it, and some of them don't, that's not. That's, it's not a really helpful way to do it, and and um, that's where the importance of the, the you know the kit in every room comes into it as well. That it's just got to feel part of what it, it normally is. And so, um, with our patients, um, um, we we have on our telephone message, and it's it's the first thing that will one of the first things that will get offered. But as a as an equal choice, you know, how would you like that appointment with a doctor? We can offer you a, a near me video consultation, or we can offer. Um, a, a telephone slot if you prefer and um, or a telephone appointment and um, and so I think that, that getting patients comfortable with it you know there's 600,000 uh, near me's now happened so far plus in Scotland so a fair portion of the population have had experience of it and albeit there'll be multiples within there who have had more than one but I think it's it's so increasingly common within our, our outpatient colleagues um, who have have really gone to, to to time with it, and obviously with the risks of going into a hospital, um, significant numbers of my patients don't want to go near anywhere near a hospital, and so they 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 are, they are very comfortable um, to suddenly decide on that. And we saw that in the in in the uh, the, the public's uh, consultation when when they said you know it was still one of their preference options even even after um, uh, COVID restrictions were raised and whilst they were in place, indeed it was their preference they preferred to do it this way. So um, with the selection biases that come with that, but um, I would say that, that as long as your whole system is geared up for it and your admin or your, your gatekeepers, your welcomers, and it's like, you know, do you want to use this auto teller to deposit your cheque? And, and how long did it take us all to say, hmm, 
yeah, I, I'm comfortable with that. Um, and, uh, and and then before you know it, you're at home, not even going in and taking the photo of the check on your own phone. Um, so I think it's just a, 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 a how we present it. Um, and that's key. And, and the admin role is absolutely critical. And, and, and the clinicians have got to be behind that. Um, and so um, I, I don't know if any of my, my, my practice manager colleagues have any comments from their sides um, as to I think cl clinician resistance can sometimes be an issue. Um, not to say that GPs are at all fickle. We're a, we're a lovely bunch and uh, we always always say, say, say the same thing consistently. Thank you, Scott. And that's a fantastic point. Admin have such a key role in this. Uh, Margarita, Wendy, Julie, do you have any co further comments to add to that? No, I, I was just, the only thing that I would say is um, we're completely dependent on the, the good training of the admin staff. It's their admin staff that really do this. It's that they guide the patient through it um, seamlessly and they're very, very good at it. And I, I just, I don't think we would be so successful at using it if it weren't for the confidence of the reception staff encouraging patients to to do this I, I would completely agree with that um, they normalize it they ask the patient if they ever FaceTime family um, and just put similarities in place so I think I think it is the admin team that do make or break it the, the GPs in my practice have repeatedly said I don't explain it properly so they just say no um, but if patients are used to going on the website using your your online prescribing they're able to use this as well Can I, may oh, I yeah, say something right. yeah of course thank you in my experience as well is it's been so the elective ones where we're using the the the, the our admin team to help has been fantastic and the explanation they give to patients and the patients go online and and they can they can see you know they get support and, and there's dialogue when we're doing it opportunistically the way that i have been trying to teach some of the other guys in the practice to use it is and um, we do it within different rooms so we're not together and we pretend to be a patient so someone's the clinician in front of the screen someone's the pretend patient with the mobile our phone and we just actually go through role play, role play so that we all know what patients are facing on the other side when they're having to do you know to log in or to try and create a, a, um, a consultation from whichever device they're using and so, so that's one way to help so you can talk a patient through really clearly in simple and, and encouraging language this is what to do I'll help you I'll talk you through it we're not in any rush because guess what it's, it's really worthwhile and, and I think that allays a lot of anxiety on both sides. Thank you, Margarita. That is a really great practical example. And I know that that's been used in a couple of GP practices um, involved in a project we recently undertook. So that's a really great example. Thanks. We've got a question around confidentiality. So um, my concern is confidentiality for young people, often teenagers, um, as we share in office, single rooms dedicated for near me, consultations are very limited. Is there any advice on the panel from um, for N on this question? I, I, I think um, I, I, I instantly saw that and I had it instantly related to it. And, um, and uh, 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 the, I think the first thing I suddenly realised was I've always assumed that when I'm having telephone consultations that they're they're, they're somewhere where they're they're not being overlooked, and of course now we can see that, and we realise that it's 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 uh, people phone us from a whole host of places, um, but, but that we probably didn't necessarily realise when we had the ignorance of not being able to see them on a telephone. And um, it's something that we we have preambled for from an admin side, and I've spoke about it before with them. Um, I I don't think that we actually do it maybe as much as we should. Um, so I have we have spoken about it with our admin that that when we're doing that preamble, make sure you're in somewhere. It has a good Wi-Fi connection that you're, you you feel that you're um, in a private area. It has been as part of that conversation. Um, I would need to check with my admin whether they still say that, that, that to, to, to that kind of narrative, but it has um, been brought up before. Um, and I, if I ever do see somebody in the background or anything, I, I usually do stop the consultation. I say, you, you know, you, I can see there's other people around. Are you okay to 
to continue talking. Oh no, no, that's fine. That's you know, he knows what it's all about, or he's been actually. Can you come over here and sit next to me? And some of them sometimes they come in and sit down next to them. And oh, it's my mum, and you know, I've been struggling with my acne or something. You know, they sit down together and they discuss it. So um, that's sometimes been useful, and I've not objected to it. I think it's just knowing about it now that maybe we didn't before. Um, and when somebody was having a consultation with us sitting on the train or the bus, um, that was quite nice to not know. I suspect, and now we suddenly see that they're there, and you go, um. Are you happy this? Because I, I, I don't feel terribly happy myself. So I think that's that's one part of it. Um, I don't know if others have comments. Um, um, there's another good question in the in the chat as well, which we can do after that. Um, um, I don't know how Margaret or, or others feel about it. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. Anyway, it's a new new experience. So if I may, if I may speak and just say, um, definitely it's worthwhile exploring that when you first open up the consultation and you're saying this is my name, this is who I am and you're setting the boundaries and you're setting the guidelines and you're saying may I have your consent for this, that and the next thing and you know what the parameters are. Um, but, but like I said, I mentioned the guy in the tractor, he's in the middle of the field of nowhere. I've had guys in the car, but I haven't had the public transport one to be honest, um, but I've definitely had the ones lots and lots where you've got one a child or somebody in the house with a girlfriend with a mum and dad with someone who's got dementia who's got the, the the next of kin and all the power of attorney and so you're just trying to make sure first of all find out their name so you know who you're talking to make it much more amicable and say hi you, you know every first name you know your names you're not just talking at someone with some people and then documenting it gaining their consent documenting it and then moving on from there i, I have had folk at work and i say look, and i do make a point of saying you know if you're at work, you know, are you in an area which is private? Are, are you able to speak? And um, and then giving the, the permission then for the patient or, um, to make that decision themselves, share it and document it. Excellent, thank you. We'll jump on to another question, which is uh, rather topical as well. So how do you deal with an uninvited person in the near me waiting area? Um, this. I've spotted this on a number of occasions. If you recognise the name, do we have any legal obligation to speak to them if they are uninvited? I think maybe we start with one of our managers and then I'll give my kind of practice side of it because they're, they're the front line of this, our admin. I think about it the same way as somebody walking into the practice and asking for medical care. You know, it's, it's I think, uh, what, what do our managers think about it? Because I'm interested to see their stats first. For ourselves, we would it would be the the admin girls that would be picking up and just communicating and saying you haven't got an appointment um, because there is there is some people experimenting with it um, so they're in there by accident um, and just playing about. We've never had anybody just expecting to be seen um, in the two years that we've been using it. We've had a few people that were practicing prior to their appointment in half an hour's time. So um, the, the admin team just start a, a brief dialogue with them and like they, they would at reception. Yeah, we, we, we use the, we sometimes use the, um, our admin actually, I mean, Dare I say it? My admin tend not to go into the waiting room too much. They don't leave it logged in. I think we started with that and it tended not to be a big issue for us. So um, our admin don't go in there traditionally. If I spot somebody in there that's not, because I have it left open during the day, um, and uh, you know, make sure you tick that box when you're logging in, leave me in for the rest of the day. Well, if, if that's what you want to do, but I just leave it logged in. And when I spot somebody there and they've not got an appointment, um, um, I might just bubble them a notification message, you know, that the, 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 you hit the drop down rather than hit join call, you hit notify and you just bubble them a message and just say, um, good afternoon. I, I can't see that you've got an appointment. Um, is there something that, that we can help with? And suddenly they disappear. So, <laughs> um, so I think they were just trying. I, as I say, I don't think we've had anybody, m m m um, you know, going in there to try to get an appointment. Um, it's always been about just experimenting or just um, seeing seeing what it was. Um, I think practices who have the link more overtly on their websites tend to, to have this issue more and more. And those that put it you know, under, you know, appointment types or something, you know, somewhere that they, they wouldn't instantly be able to click there. Um, and it, uh, it reduced that attraction, if that makes sense. So good to have it on your websites, but um, just be careful how overt it is and how attractive it might look to, to <laughs> click the button, because before they know it, they're sitting in your waiting room. So um, it's not been a big issue, um, but um, are you legally obliged to speak to them? I don't think you are legally obliged, um, but, you know, if somebody walks into your practice and say, I need help, then 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 we have a way to respond to that and our admin 
um, you know, are the great are, are great front line to that because they're really experienced at knowing what needs needs to disturb the doctor and what needs to, to, to or what needs to see one of the nurses or what they can be asked to, to book a routine appointment. With us, just to say in our practice, we do have it actually advertised as pretty overt on our website and Facebook. And we've had one or two, not many people who are not even within our practice population who've joined the waiting area. <laughs> but, you know, the reception team do have a, um, a PC open there, well, a monitor. It's open all the time and they get back in touch with whoever. Um, but ultimately, it's like, as you said, it's like somebody walking in the door with a problem. Um, and, and, you know, if they're temporary resident, if they're yours, it depends what it is. Um, but typically, you know, it's I have to say that admin do support us and, and sort that out and it's not like a casualty sort of department so, or, or an MIU so it's, it's not happening that often. Excellent, thank you everyone. Mark, is there time for one more question or is that the wrap up? I think probably we could squeeze one more in and then we'll do a wrap up. Thank you, Rachel. Um, There was a question around uh, systems, so administrative record keeping, patient systems, and how they interact with near me. Does anyone want to elaborate on what work you've had to do to your systems? I'm assuming track or vision, and and how that then links in with near me. Um, I, I, for for us, it, it it's completely independent, Rachel. Um, we and and that may be something to improve in the future but um you know they they they, they can appear as just a, a list of maybe four or five or six people there um and then the clinicians are working off of obviously their vision and then we have we use informatica front desk and um, for our appointments so um you're kind of just jumping between but with two screens it's quite straightforward to be honest and we have um we, we run a server system in Tayside, so i have we, we have one one screen will be on the server one screen will be off the server um and and it's fairly seamless to move between them it would be really nice as soon as they arrived in the waiting room that they arrived on my front desk um to say that they were here in the in the you know they, they'd arrived um an it step too far and and the functionality would be nice but it's not a, it's really it, you know i look at the time i say oh it's two o'clock and i go across and They've been waiting for four minutes. I go, oh, that's nice. It's kind of like when they were in the practice and they came down waiting and I got to my two o'clock appointment and went, oh, they're here. That's good. Um, so it's not really a, a huge difference. I would say that that, that lack of interface um, is is mainly because of the kind of nature of the product. So this is um, near me is obviously a, um, is our brand in, in Scotland. And um, but we have got the functionality that if we want to, to move to an, another company, then we, we do so. And keeping that slight independence, um, if something were to happen to the company, is, is, is I suppose has got some uses as well. So um, but at the moment it's all working good. Um, and uh, I think the other the other decision that you have to make as a practice of interfaces is how you use the reminders. So there's the inbuilt reminders that you can use to send the, the link to your room. Um, but that was a, a suggestion that we came up with quite early on in the programme. I, I remember um, um, when that light bulb moment happened in a meeting, Rachel, and that was a great change that we made. Um, but before that, we were already using the reminders off of off a front desk. So we we, we text them a, an appointment reminder, and we text them off a front desk the, 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 the link as well. So it's just about deciding in your practice how you want to make sure that they get the link and they're happy with it. Um, but definitely sending it out in advance of the appointment. And then we have an appointment reminder system that, that reminds them to, to then log in. So um, I think it's unique to the practice. It's about that being embedded within your processes. It's got to be unique to your practice, but um, it, it's 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 a it's a great adjunct to that. Thank you, Scott. Does anyone else have any comments on use of patient admin systems and and setting up clinics? No. Thank you, Mark. Over to you. Okay. So yeah, any any of the questions that remain unanswered, then uh, we will. Um, We'll put them in the document that'll come out to you afterwards. Um, and we will share that with you as we have that um, produced. So basically, um, what we'd really like to do is to get your feedback today on how you found our webinar. We've got a very short survey. It's only five questions long. The average completion time is about a minute or, or two minutes most. So it'd be really good to find a little bit more about you, but also about um, 
uh, what would be helpful in terms of near me use and future webinars. Um, I would like to really take this opportunity to, to thank everyone who's participated and joined in today. It's great to have so many people join us today uh, from, from primary care and beyond in the regions that we were targeted. Um, and it's really good to hear of, of the, the practical real life. Um, excuse me a minute. I'll just put that back on. Primary life solutions that all presenters have spoken about in terms of the day to day implementation of Near Me. So it's really good stuff to hear about real life day to day and um, what works for them and how they've overcome some of the, balance, uh, the barriers and the challenges and acknowledging that it is about choice and it doesn't work for every situation every time. Uh, but it's a very important tool uh, for, for everybody to use. So um, and again, I would just uh, thank uh, David for, um, for running everything in the background. That's really helpful. And also our speakers, um, Scott and Julie, Margarita and Wendy, and also Rachel for, for monitoring the Q&A and, and comparing that so um, skillfully. And so what we'd very much like to say is we'll, we'll say cheerio for now and hopefully we will uh, see you at another webinar. Um, there's more information on these two websites here, um, nearme.scot and uh, tech.scot near me. And uh, the near me team, uh, you can contact us on, uh, I think it's nss.nearme. Anyway, we'll put it in the information sheet that comes out along with the recording of uh, today's uh, webinar. So again, thank you very much.